All right, hey guys, Jason's back. Are you guys having trouble passing the C of Q? Need a little help after school? Want to go in strong? Well, you've come to the right place. Now, let's get started. Okay, here we go. Um, have been... Uh, I haven't been uh, producing any uh, videos lately, but uh, I apologize. Uh, although it seems people are still using what I produced and still using it to pass the C of Q. Um, but what we're going to get into this time is a little bit more uh, uh, difficult stuff like Sokotoa, which so many people struggle with. But um, I'm going to show you the way that I was taught, which is just simple and foolproof, but how do you get good at math? You practice. And you can't just learn it once and it's going to be it. You need to have practice sheets or the same questions and you just practice them over and over. You can't just look at the math and do it. So here's something um, that keeps popping up on the C of Q that even I, <laughs> because school was so long ago, I didn't even know this was on the C of Q, but people keep saying it's popping up. Um, and if you guys remember, for, for you guys that have never learned this, it's, it's going to be a little bit tougher. But for you guys that are going way back, this is your apex point or, what, or apex length. And you're looking for that length. So they're going to give you the large opening or large, they, they have different names for it, right? Large opening, large diameter, small opening small diameter because you got to remember to visualize this this is for doing a cone because this is something that's round like it it doesn't look round from here but you got to think about this this is round and you're going to use it for radial um uh radial layout instead of triangulation right or so d you can also go a b uh, d and c and simple little uh, formula like that which will be on the they'll have it on the test they'll have it at the front of the book or wherever in the book that they have any formulas because this is one of those ones nobody remembers it <laughs> and um, so the way the question will be thrown at you they'll have this they'll have all these numbers and basically it's pretty straightforward math right they're gonna say what's the apex apex length of this but they could also kind of throw a twist at you they could also ask you what the slant length is for this formula which is a little bit more uh, a little bit tr uh, trickier so if they ask for the apex length they're asking for this so you're basically going to just fill in fill in that <laughs> you know pretty straightforward but then if they ask for the slant length well if you if you have this if you have all this then you can figure out this you know what this is it's basically half of a and then you've got that well now it's a Pythagoras question so again now they're doing two-step questions to trick you to see uh, um, if you have a good grasp of the uh, material then they're gonna ask for the angle of the stretch out and this is the one that I don't even remember this from school I guess I wasn't there that day. Um, so the angle of the stretch out is when you actually lay this out. And where's my marker? Um, it's basically when you do the radial line, it's going to look something like this. And then you're going to use oops, you're going to use your dividers and and swing a point like that. And then you're basically you're going to end up with an angle here. And because that will tell you how much you have to swing to make that pattern. So it's called angle of stretch out. So if, they, if they're asking for the angle of stretch out, well, of course, they're going to give you these numbers. They're going to give you A, B, and C. And you're going to use them all to figure out D. <laughs> and then you're going to use D and half of A to figure out the slant length. Let me write that in there. Slant length so from there to there is your slant length 
So then you're going to take the number 180, which I don't know where they pull that. Like, you know, uh, <laughs> I don't know theoretical math. I don't know where they pull these numbers from. So 180 multiplied by the large opening, which is A or you know, whatever, whatever letter, they, whatever they're calling it. That's your large opening divided by the slant length will give you that angle. So, and again, this, these, this never used to pop up on the CFQ, but it's starting to pop up because, of course, there's teachers out there that just love making people's life horrible. That just love seeing guys that aren't that book smart. They love seeing guys fail five, ten times, wasting thousands of dollars to get a CFQ on something that no one's ever going to use ever again in their life. But, okay. Yeah, but uh, moving onward. So that's pretty straightforward. So again, so say if they give you that as 10, they're going to give you that as 8. And they tell you that this is 6. You're basically just going to put all these numbers in there. B is 8, 10, 10. vertical height, C would be 6. So 6 times A, 10. So you got 60 divided by 2. So that means that height would be 30. So basically if you had 30 here, so let's let's take this triangle down here like that. Sorry, clean this up a little bit. So there's 30. That part right there, um, A or B, whatever you want to call it, is 5. So do a little math, a little Pythagoras, that'll give you that number. You give me two seconds, I'll figure that out for you. 30 squared, <laughs> 30 squared plus 525 equals square root. Well, that's it. So that's 30.41. If I, I just did that quickly, I could have messed it up. So 30.41. Uh, so that's 10, and that's 30.41. So, 180 times 10, 1800 obviously, divided by 30.41 equals 59. So, if I didn't screw that up, that'd be 59 degrees, and or 59. 0.19 if because I don't know what they're going to break that down to on the CFQ it could be just one decimal it could be two I'm not sure I've never seen the question in my life so um, let's see how that uh, goes but again it comes down to practicing because again that formula don't worry about memorizing it just memorize it enough so you know how to look for it to recognize it that that's the problem okay I'm gonna cut out here for a second okay a uh, little review okay top view of a squared around on center squared around so this is a question that's been hanging around for years pretty straightforward just to make sure you know a little bit about pattern how much of this plan view do you need to lay this out, this squared around? A quarter. So now, they've obviously because it's easy, everybody's memorized the question. And again, for some people, um, if it gets a little bit different, they get easily confused. So now here's a new way that they throw it at you. So they're going to do that. So now how much of the plan view do you need so basically if there if this is ever thrown at you so when you look at that one there's four parts that are exactly the same so it's a quarter so here now that it's kicked over to the side there's only two parts that are the same so you need half the plan view so that's just a, another little question that'll pop up that uh, if you haven't put any thought to or gone over this you're going to uh, uh, have a real cranial cramp, as they say, right? So there's a little something I wanted to go over. 
Uh, maybe I'm going to pause for a sec. All right, okay, a little quick um, refresher on a question that is uh, <laughs> messing with people and they don't recognize it. So we've gone over this in previous pattern, right? So if you need to figure out the length of that heel, <laughs> you better know that that's called a heel, and the throat. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell you that you know we'll say that the throat is eight inches and we'll say the width of the duct is 20. so and we'll say this is a this is 90 degrees right so what's the what's the heel radius well eight is the throat plus the width of the duct is 28. so 28 times 1.57 times the degrees now because it's a 90 these two cancel each other out so it's 28 times 1.57 pretty straightforward. If this was a 60 degree elbow, you wouldn't cancel this out. That would be 60 and then you just divide everything by 90. You guys should know this already. This should, I've already gone over this, you should know it. But what they do now is throw you a curveball. So that's my little note right here in the corner here. So what they do is this. They go like that and then they put a little round, like a radius. But you kind of don't recognize it because it doesn't look like an elbow. It doesn't look like really a heel. So they'll go X, Y. They're going to say, what's the length? And they don't put a throat. They just say, that's 20. So they're going to say, oh, sorry. And they give you an angle. <laughs> they go 51 degrees. So they're lo you're looking at that and a lot of people are getting uh, stumped with this. And you shouldn't be because that's a radius. It's just like you're, it's basically a heel radius. So, same thing. Uh, the radius uh, is 20 times 1.57 times the degrees, or the angle, times 51, fucking terrible writing, over 90. And there, there's your X to Y. And, and Okay, so I'm starting to have a little uh, difficulty with my camera. It's being uh, temperamental. Okay, so back to uh, Sokotoa, triangulation. Um, you're always looking for an angle, or you might have an angle and you're going to be looking for one of these lengths. So, first of all, we're going to talk about what everything's called. So, this side over here, opposite this side here adjacent do you really you don't even re need to remember the names as long as you know o a and h and you know h is hypotenuse again <laughs> i don't really care uh but the thing is so you have sokotoa so there's different names for different angles depending on what you're looking for you're going to have sine cosine and tangent now the way i was taught in college was it was always tangent you're always just looking for your tangent of angle. And for a quick, a quick explanation, tangent of angle. Because if this isn't, when you have an angle over here, and we're gonna use 30 degrees a lot, because that's usually what always comes up on CFQ. You can't use the number 30 to do any math on this. You have to change it to the tangent of angle. So basically on your calculator you're gonna go 30 and hit the tan button. 30 tan. And it's gonna equal 0.577. Actually, because I haven't <laughs> to make sure my calculator does that. 30 tan. 0.577. Perfect. So again, so why do we need to learn this? Uh, for layout and there's other certain kinds of questions. There's a, there's a question on the CFQ floating around that totally boggles everybody's mind where they're going to give you that right there and they're going to put a line there. They're going to tell you that this here is 8 feet. They're going to say that this line here is 24 inches and they're going to say this is 30 degrees and they want you to figure out 
what this is. They're going to call it X, but I'm going to call it O for today. So, but let's, let's do a little practice first. So first of all, let's just do a regular, just regular triangle. We're going to call this 30 degrees. We're going to call this 60 inches and we want to figure out what X is. So on the C of Q you'll see formulas. They'll say uh, the way they do it, they'll show uh, something, something like O equals o, uh, A times T. So the way I was taught, and which is a great easy way, is what we call working triangles. So it's not quite the same as this, but you got to remember this. So they call it TOA. There's SO, KA, and TOA. So there's TOA. So, no TOA. So let's look at this. We got A. This is your A, right? We know that's 60 inches. Okay, we got 30 degrees. Uh, we're looking for X, which is O, so that's blank. So we're, we got 10. What did I say 30 10 was? 0.577. So, if you do what the triangle tells you to do, it's telling you to multiply. Anything on the bottom, you multiply, and these you divide. So basically you're going to take 0.577 and multiply it by 60. 0.577 times 60 equals 34 point, so it equals 34.62. So that's what this is going to be over here, 34.62. Uh, pretty straightforward, but uh, we'll do another one. Let me wipe that off. Because this is where practice comes in. So, here's the triangle again. So this time, I'm going to make this 40 inches. I'm going to make this 25 degrees. And I want X. Well, in this case, X is actually A. 40 is O. And this is T. Oops, sorry, not A. T, as in tangent. So... We're going to go back up to our, what I call, the working triangle. All right Now, if you're, if you're just learning this for the first time, this is going to just spin your head. If you're, excuse me, spitting here. Uh, if this is a review for you, you have half a chance. But if you're just learning this for the first time, we're going to have to go over a lot of stuff here and spend some time with this. But again, practice. Okay, so we got 40. O is 40. So there's 40 right there. We'll put it on this side of it. But it goes up on top. Uh, X, A, O. This is what we're looking for. So that's that. We don't have any. And we have 25 degrees. Again, you cannot put 25 in there because it's an angle. We need the tangent of angle. So we're going to go 25, 10 equals... 0 0.466. 0.466. Now, the last one we did, we multiplied it. But this one, that's on top, that's on the bottom. This time we're dividing. So 40 divided by 0 0.466 equals 85.8. So this is 85.8. And it's, well, whatever. It's like this could be bananas, fucking, but it's inches. So that's going to be inches, not miles. Okay, so again, we're just going to do the same thing again. We're going to keep just practicing. Because how do you get good at sheet metal? By doing it, by practicing it, going over it and over it. And how many times you cut drive plates, how many times you notch, or whatever the pound screws in. You get better by doing it over and over again. Same with this. So now I'm going to go uh, 65 inches. I'm going to go 35 degrees and I want X. Now again I always tell guys to name everything and you don't really have to worry about it right now but when we start getting into all of Sokotoa you will have to learn how to name stuff to uh, 
figure out which one you're doing because they're not going to tell you. So again, uh, X is O, the opposite. 65 on the bottom here is A, the adjacent. And again, this is T for tangent. So 35 uh, degrees. So I'm going to say 35 tan equals, oh, that one's easy. That one equals 30, 35 tan equals 0.7. So we wipe that out, we go 0.7, get rid of 40, and we've got 65 inches here. So again, what does the triangle tell you to do? Well, they're both on the bottom, so you multiply it. Oops, and I had it up on the fucking thing there. So let's go 35, 10 equals 7. So 0.7 times 65 equals 45.5. So this is 45.5 inches. Now, again, for the guys that know this, you're already getting bored, right? So now there's one more thing, um, even though it doesn't always show up, but let's do it anyways. Yeah, let's just get rid of everything here. Is Because sometimes they'll do this. They'll say, they'll give you 30 inches here, they'll give you 60 inches here. And then they're going to ask you what the uh, angle is. And again, this is where your, your uh, detective work is really important because when you see that and that, then you look over at your answer column, they're going to ask for something in degrees, right? And that's how you know that you're, you're on the right path, right? Because if they had an X over here, well, that would be a length. And you'd know it was a Pythagoras question, right? Not a tan, not a triangulation question or a Soka, some type of Soka Toa question. So we'll get rid of that. So we're looking for degrees here. So let's clean up there. I'll just wipe it with my fingers. So what's 30? Uh, oh, <laughs> oh, uh, this down here is 60 inches. It's, oh, the adjacent. Very good. Okay, the adjacent. So 30 goes here, 60 goes here, and what do you do? Oh, you divide them. So 30 divided by 60 equals 0.5. Okay, so the tan is 0.5. Is that the angle? No, it's the tangent of angle. So because there's like, you're not going to have 0.5 degrees. Very unlikely. That's why, again, you got to think. you got to be a detective. you got to be Sherlock Holmes. When you see funny answers, say, why am I getting an answer like that? Why am I out in left field? Oh, because that's not an angle. That's the tangent of angle. Right? So, now this is where you, you got to practice working your calculator. Because, like, now, I don't know if I can zoom in on that. Oh, not really. I'm not getting enough light. There we go. So, again, uh, you're going to hit your tan button, right? So, if you guys that have already done this you, in school, you, you shouldn't have a problem with this. But normally, you go whatever the angle is and hit tan, and it gives you your tangent. But right now, you've already got the tangent, so you've got to go backwards through it and do second function tan. So I go 0.5, second function, tan. And there we go, 26.56 degrees. So, uh, where are we, tan? So, the second function, 26.5 degrees. Okay. So now, hopefully you're not totally twisted up, because again, this, this, this is not something easy to learn. So let's, now that we've practiced doing this, we're going to go back to this question that is a C of Q question. Let me get rid of this. I'm going to get, you know what, I'm going to get rid of everything on here so there's, so there's less stuff to look at. I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to get rid of that because we're also going to name stuff as we go. That's 30 degrees. So they're going to say they could be talking about a roof line because sometimes that's how they talk about this. 
they're going to say that's a roof line. So you're going to say it's 30 degrees. They're going to say the first hanger is 24 inches long. How long is this hanger? Right? And um, so the first problem is, is you're missing that. What is that called? Hmm. Remember we're going through this? That's A. That's the adjacent. This is O, the opposite. So now if we got O and A, we know that's a tangent. So what are we going to do? We're going to do our working triangle so we can TOA. Because this, that working triangle, the TOA triangle, it's going to tell us what to do. And this is one of, this is something you need to memorize because that exactly won't be like that on the uh, in the booklet. So 30 degrees 30 tan we can't use 30 degrees. You have to tan it because it's the tangent. So if you go 30 tan, you're gonna end up with 0.577. So we'll go down there, put it in the triangle, 0 0.577. Uh, A is what we're looking for, so we have O. 24 inches that goes on top so what's the triangle telling us to do divide 24 divided by 0.577 equals 41 equals 41.59 so that's a here we go 41.59 inches so guess what now you have all of the bottom here. So uh, 8 feet here, 8 times 12 is 96, I do believe, 96 inches. You're going to add those two to get the full length across there, which if I'm not mistaken, it's like 137, whoopsie, 41.59. I already had it on the calculator and I, and I removed and cleared it like a dummy. So 137.59. Five nine is is right across here, which is A, and X is actually O. So again, let's go back over. So our tan is still 0.577. It's still 30 degrees. It's not going to change. So what do we have here? We have the adjacent A 137.57.59. What does the triangle tell you to do? Oh, it's telling you to multiply because they're both on the bottom. So again, I've still got that number on my calculator. So all I'm going to do is multiply it by 0.577 equals 79.39. Now, that's something you can practice because it, like to me, that's fun. I know. I got problems. So, because it's it's making you practice and think. Because when you work on this smaller triangle, you have the O. You have the opposite and 30 degrees, the tangent of it. But then when you collect all this together and do it, then you're going to do it the opposite way. The first time, you divide it. And the second part of the question, you multiply it. But it's good practice. So... Just for, just for fun right now, I'm going to stop and then with the magic of video, um, I'm going to put some uh, practice questions on the uh, board here and then you can stop and pause. Because it was broken. Okay, so I don't know what you caught from that because uh, again my camera is being a little uh, temperamental. Uh, okay, lighting's good. So, uh, okay, you've had a chance. Hopefully you saw it on the first time. If not, there's uh, the questions and you can pause. But I'm going to go right into uh, doing these because especially if, if you guys are struggling. For the guys that are struggling, I'm just going to go right into this. But for the guys, the idea is to practice doing this. So, basically pause it. <coughs> um, and do the questions without wait for like do the questions first and then wait for me to answer it which I'm gonna do right now anyways but that's the the magic of being able to hit the pause button right okay so we're gonna go through the step like I do with each question so you go into this first triangle you gotta name it 
What's the bottom part right here? The adjacent. A. What's this part over here? The opposite. O. Give it a name. So if you've got O and A here, you know it's tangent. And again, that's obvious. We're, we're only doing tan right now. But, but when we get into learning how to do the other, uh, so could, all of Sokotoa, then you're going to understand why I always talk about naming these two and not this one. But anyways, so, working triangle. Yink, there's your triangle. Toa. Rem this is what you have to memorize. Toa. Starting at the bottom corner and going up. Toa. Because that's how I'm going to get you to memorize all of them. But we're just going to we're, worry about Toa right now. So, A. 100. T, 3010. If you use your calculator, 30 degrees, 3010, 0.577. So, what's the triangle telling you to do? Multiply. So, that should be actually pretty simple. 0.577. <laughs> uh, just move the decimal place two spots, spaces, equals 57.7. So that's 57.7. Okay. Now we go into the next one. Get rid of that. So, 200 inches. This, okay, sorry. Let's name it. What's X? X is actually A, the adjacent. 200 over here, opposite. O. And obviously 25 degrees is tangent. Tan. So, 25 Tan, 0.466, I'll leave that on my calculator, tan, 0.466, we've got A, that's what we're looking for, O is 200, so we'll go 200, so it's 200 divided by 0.466, because that's what the triangle's telling you to do. Okay. 429.18 very good okay next one we've got 100 in, what oh let's name it what's this same as every time opposite what's this same as every time a adjacent so we've got adjacent let's, oh let's clear all this off first a is 150 so I get my fat ass out of the way. 100 is always 100. What's it telling you to do? Um, divide. I <laughs> got you. 100 divided by 150 equals, oh, pure evil. 0.666, the number of the beast. Yeah. That was just a fluke. Didn't even try to do that. <coughs> um... Okay, 0.666. Now again, that's the tangent of angle. So really, we have to take that and second function tan, and that's going to give us 33 degrees. So basically, right here, 33 point, we'll call it 0.7 because I rounded up a bit. Okay, now let's clear this off again. It's getting a little dirty. Sorry about that. Now, here we go. We're going to name this uh, O, A, opposite J. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Oh, they're looking for X. This is detective work. I told you I'd throw a trick question here. Are you guys all like, oh, discombobulated? Oh, what do I do? What do I do? You think. Slow down and think because. They love doing that to everybody in the C of Q. By throwing in trick questions and changing stuff up just to mess with your mind. And yes, like you know what you'd like to do with all these teachers that keep making the C of Q harder and harder. Yeah, it's easy for them, but you know what? They're all book smart. Not everybody else is. Thanks for trying. So, hypotenuse. So, when I look at that, there's nothing here for an angle. So what that tells me, if there's, if an answer is not an angle, and there's no angle anywhere in the question, right away that tells me 
it's not sulcatola. It's not like what I call advanced triangulation. It goes back to regular Pythagoras, right? Because they love doing that. You know, you think you got one thing going on and they throw a curveball in at you. So, oh, Sokotoa. So that's not, well, it still is O and A if you want to call it that. But basically, 40 squared plus 60 squared, square rooted, done. Next question. <clears throat> so here we go again. Oh, look at that. Degrees. We know we're in Sokotoa. So 36 is O. Down here is X. I don't like calling it X. I like calling it A. A. And not just because I'm Canadian. Adjacent. Opposite. Right? There's your triangle up here. So opposite is 36. Oh, 35 degrees. 30, oops, that's a boo-boo. 35, 10. 0. 0.7. 0. 0.7, well it's 0. 0.700, so there's no point in wasting my time writing that. So, what's the triangle telling you to do? 36 divided by 0.7. Doesn't get any easier. 51 point, 51 point, so this right here is 51.4. Now, last question. Here we go. 65, what is that? That's O, X, that's A, the adjacent, opposite, 10. Okay, so 20, 10. You guys always got to remember, you got to tan that number because you can't use it as an angle. Point three six. Yeah, we'll call it point three six four. Round it. Now, where's our working triangle? Oh, hello, Gov. Now, fancy a pint, pip, pip, chew, yeah, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Uh, what do we got here? 65 is O. And the tan, after we, uh, the angle tan, the tangent for that angle is 0.364. So, 65 tells you what to do. It's up on top. This is on bottom. 65 divided by 0.364 equals 178 and change. 0.57. It's a terrible five. My apologies. Okay, so again, when you see the triangle, you got degrees in there, you know you're in degrees. You know you're doing some sort of triangulation, uh, some sort of Sokotoa. Because most of what we deal with for pattern is Toa. And we're going to get into that. But because there's teachers that think you need to know it all, they're starting to put that on the CFQ now and it's really ignorant because you don't need it for any layout pattern, for any pattern development. So I am going to turn this off so I can clear the board and we're going to get a little bit more technical. Okay, let's see, how, let's see if everything's on the board up there. Okay, good. Hopefully you're seeing this. Okay, so here's where it starts to get a little more complicated. And again, hey, if, you got, if you're one of those people that this just right over the head, and no matter how much you work on this, you just can't get it, well, it's two or three marks on your test that you're not going to have a chance of getting. So like I say, try to learn every, every uh, bit of math and pattern. That way you're not throwing away... Uh, marks on the test but okay so we already talked about toe the toa triangle we're doing toa so let's just go right over it now like, again they call it so ka toa so ka toa and again it's pretty if you if you always start in the bottom corner and go up so ka toa now how do we know what we're going to use for what? Okay, so here we have a couple of possible questions. And, and this is this one right here, um, it pops up. <laughs> it pops up. So, I always talk about naming stuff. So let's name it. So X, well, we know X is actually A, the adjacent, right? 
So we know that's what we're looking for, right? And 20. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. 20. Well, normally we name this. Oh, pretend when we're doing Toa. But there's nothing there. It's not asking for anything. So just ignore it. Don't name it. We're going to name this, which is the hypotenuse. So we go like that, H. So we have A, H, and normally in the first part of the lesson we're going tan or T. So but the thing is, if we got an A and H, I want you to look at this. There's an H, but no A. This one, there's an A, but no H. This one does have an A and an H. So guess what this is? C for cosine, right? For that one. Now, let's practice trying to figure out what we're going to do on another one. So here's X. What's X? We've always been calling it O, because it is. It's the opposite. Okay, we got 40 over here. And again, what's it's the hypotenuse, right? So let's name it H. So we have O. And we have H. No, no, O, O, H. So, <laughs> sine. All right, and this one, like I said, is cosine. Right, and we've already done enough toas, but this is where you figure it out. So if I said this was 60, and this was 70, or let me clean that up a little bit. Or if that was X, right? We were looking for X, and this was 30 degrees. So we would name that O, and this would be A. O and A. Nope. No. O, A. So we know this is T. So that is how we're figuring this out. This is how we're naming what we got to figure out on these. Uh... So again, let's go back to this one. We know the hypotenuse is 20 inches and it's 30 degrees, right? So here's where I ask people to think for a second. When you have a triangle like this, the hypotenuse is always the longest, right? So if that's 20 inches, if this is the longest, common sense tells you that this is going to be less than 20, right? You can even take a guess right now. Hmm, 20, it's going to be shorter. It could be fucking 18, it could be 15, but it's less than 20. So now we've already, we've, here's our triangle. So we know it's H and A, and we, because H and A, oh, it's this one. Okay, so H is 20, and then we have 30 degrees. So we're going to put, Oh, wait a minute, we can't put 30 there, because it's an angle. So, 30, and I know we've been practicing this as tan, but this isn't tan, this is cosine. Oh, guess what's right beside the tan button? The cosine button, cos. So 30 cos equals 0.866. So 30 cos is 0.866. And where is that going to go? Right here. 0.866. And what do you, what's it telling you to do? Multiply. Pretty straightforward. So I've already got that on my calculator. 0 0.866 times 20. 17.3. So who had a guess? Well, I already knew what the answer was. So I say, oh, it could have been 18. But it's less than 20. Okay? That's always have an idea of like what are you in left field right field because if you come up with really weird numbers that shouldn't be there you should already know you should already have an idea what number or like is it going to be a big number is it going to be a small number right we knew it was going to be less than 20 and we ended up with well I'll just write it here 17.3 inches so now Let's do the next question. Clear? So we marked this. Or we named, sorry, named it. 40 is the hypotenuse. This is always the hypotenuse. This is O. So O and H. O 
There it is right there. OH. So we know this is sine. We've already got through it, but we're going to practice it. So 40 is H right there. So sine. Uh, oh, wait a minute. And guess where that button is? Right be the next one for the cosine button. Tan cosine sine. So let's go 30. Hit the sign button, you don't have to do anything. Point 0.5. That was easy. So, point 0.5. Oops, don't have to do anything else. So, let's look at this again. If that's 40, and we know that this is the longest number, we like we did over here. We knew that was a was less, but this one might even be a little bit more. So we just we know it's going to be less than 40. So if this is point 0.5. And the triangle is telling you to multiply again, which makes it really easy. 0.5 times 40. If you don't, I hope you're not using a calculator for this, but I'll do it anyways. 0.5 times 40 equals 20. So basically, that's going to be 20. So you can go over them, you know, rewind, start over, rewind, start over. That's why I'm going to keep putting practice questions on here for you to uh, work on this. Okay, uh, actually, I'm not even gonna work on this with you. I'm gonna just say stop, and uh, there you go. You can pause that, and now we're gonna go through it. Here we go. So, always name it. We gotta figure out which triangle we're doing, right? Is it is it sine, cosine, or tangent? So, there's x. What's x? The opposite. 60. That's H. What? Oh, should I name anything down here? No, because there's nothing there. Let's not get it involved. So we have O and H. O and H, which means this is sine. Okay? Now, so let's use the working triangle. H is 60, right there. 30 sine, 30, you can't use 30 degrees, it's an unusable number. 30 sine, again, 0.5. So that goes there, 0.5. I know we actually just did this this way, but uh, that's fine. So 0.5 times 60, because that's what it's telling you to do, and it's obvious for you guys that are half decent at math that that's 30, right? Let's go to the next one. Here we go. 60. What is that? Oh, that's the opposite. X. That's the adjacent. So if you've got O and A, you don't have nothing there. O, no. Oh, O and A. T. So that's a tangent. So, hmm. So we're going to use this triangle. So we need to get that 30 degrees to, to the tangent. 30, 10. Oh, point. 577. Seven. So that goes there. 0.577. Seven. Move my fat ass out of the way. Uh, 60 is the opposite. So that goes up on top. Okay. What's the triangle telling you to do? One's on top of the other. Divide. So 60 divided by 0.577. Seven. 103. Uh, do, 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 where are we? Is that right? Yeah, that makes sense because again, this this one will be longer than this one. 103. Uh, you know what? I'll just round it off. 104. Simple enough. Okay, let's do this one. 60 on the bottom. What's on the bottom? Adjacent. X. Hypotenuse. A. H. A, H. That means this is C, cosine. Very good. So, 60 is A, up on top. Uh, 30, uh, okay, so I gotta, co I gotta cosine that sucker. 0. 0.866. So, what's the triangle telling you to do? Divide. 60 divided by 0.866 equals 69, where are we going to put this? 60 
oops, 69.28. Now again, this is bigger than this one. It should be, it's the hypotenuse. It always is, and always will be. Okay, so that was pretty straightforward. Well, for some of us, uh, I know, hey, when I first learned it in intermediate, started learning it, it was a struggle. So, <clears throat> I'm going to put some practice questions on the board so that you guys can practice. Um, and again, uh, we'll go over it just so you can practice. So, this is what I'm always telling guys to um, memorize. Certain triangles, right? If you remember one of my triangles from earlier lessons was CVA. That's another one you should be... Uh, or VC, whatever, CVA, CFM, feet per minute, and uh, square feet, right? Ductilator question. You guys should always memorize that. You guys should be memorizing these. Now, here's the thing. Some guys, like I get this on, oh, I'm terrible memorizing. Oh, wah, wah. Okay, if you can't memorize it, then you're going to have to learn to think for yourself. So, when you get these, you'll get these as formulas in the front of the book. They're not going to tell you what it's for, but this is how it'll be written, or possible ways it's written. So say, this one would be written like that. Look familiar? So, there's your triangle, like that. Where does the S go? Right there. So this one could be written like this, C equals A over H. There's your A over H. There's your triangle. Put your C right there. Same with this one, T. They could write this as T equals O over A. So over top of each other, just like that. So there's your part of your triangle. And you're missing a piece. Well, the O is on top. The only other place it could go is right there. That's it ways of figuring this stuff out. Same with your uh, CVA question, right? So they're not going to tell you, oh, this, this is, you need it for this. They're going to write this at the beginning. They're going to write feet per minute equals CFM over square feet. So again, there's your working triangle over top of each other because there's only one spot on top. So where does the feet per minute go? Well, it goes on the bottom, feet per minute. You put your little line right there. Okay, there we go. A whole board full of questions. Let me just have a quick peek up in here. Let's see if you, hopefully you can see all those. Oop, maybe not the bottom. Let's pull out the camera a little. No, not in. Let's go out. <coughs> okay. Hopefully you can still see that. And again, if you're trying to look at all these numbers on a phone, good luck. Although you can like zoom in. But uh, so let me get out of the way. So there you go. And that's not booze, that's club soda. <laughs> so again, name it. So you can figure out, I made it simple, I kept it simple, All everything's 30 degrees. So what we'll do is basically you can pause it, rewind. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start going through it right now, one at a time. So, <coughs> excuse me, first one, let's name it, X, hypotenuse, 45 at the bottom here. Adjacent. A, H. Which one is it? It's this one. So that makes this C. Alright? And maybe what I'll do is right now I'm just going to go, yeah, go through it all. Name it. 60. What's this side? Opposite. What's the bottom here? Adjacent. O, A. That makes this a toe question. Here we go. 60 is O. And again, remember, if there's nothing there, don't name it. 
There's nothing there? Don't name it. Nothing there? Don't name it. X. Hypotenuse. O. H. You got S. So that's sine. All right. What do we got here? We got 30, 60. So this is O and A. And, oh, wait a minute. There's no angle here. Trick question. Yay! So that's not a Sokotoa question. It's a Pythagoras question. A, B, C, right? Uh, just so you guys, in case you're having a cranial cramp, A squared plus B squared. So that's 30 squared plus 60 squared. Square rooted equals C, or in this case, X. Let's go to this one. 60 is on the bottom. Everything on the bottom is A, adjacent. Everything over here is O, opposite. O, A, that makes this T. Now, X, opposite. Everything on the side is always opposite. This is the hypotenuse, O, H. Oh, so, so that's an S. Here we go, 45, this one here, H. The bottom, A, A and H. So that makes that C, cosine. Now, what do we got here, X on the side here, O. 75 here is H, so, oh, get it, so. <laughs> So that's S. Now, two qu trick questions at the end here. Just to make you think for yourself. 40 is O. The bottom here, 60, is A. So you're looking for tan. And again, this is where you gotta go second function. 60, H. 40 is A. Adjacent's always the bottom. This side's always O, but oh, there's nothing there. Don't mark it. So if you got A and H, that means this is C, right? Now, to go back through all of these, let's do, now I'm going to help you get the answers. So, A and H and C. So we're using this one. So, 45A. C, what's 30, 30 cosine, point, point eight six six. So, what's it telling you to do? Divide, 45 divided by point eight six six. 51, 51 point, actually you know what, I'm going to round it off, I'm just going to call it 52. So does that look right? Yeah, sure. It, oh, sorry. I wrote it in the wrong place. 52, because it didn't look right. Because right away I'm looking at, why does that not look right? Well, first of all, it wasn't even there. But yeah, the hypotenuse should be the longest measurement. So that's why when I thought that was 52, it didn't look right to me. That's why my uh, spider senses started tingling. Next question. OAT, so it's a TOA question. So, first of all, 30 tan, 0.577. So, these numbers, once we put them in this triangle, we can leave that one there because it's going to be the same because it's always 30 I put on these, make it easy. So, so I get my fat ass out of the way. So, oh, sorry, it's this one. TOA, 0.57. So, O is 60. So, so what's it telling you to do? 60 is on top, this is on the bottom, so let's divide. 60 divided by 0.577 equals 103.98. So that's one, I just rounded up to 104. This one. So, O, H, and we figured out it was S, so so. So first of all, 30 sine. 0.5. So that's going to be 0.5. We'll leave that one there. So, H, oh, we got, oh, 60. So, 60 divided by 0.5, 120. So that's going to be 120. 
Now, we'll do this one anyway because this is Pythagoras. A squared, B squared. So 30 squared plus 60 squared equals 4,500 square rooted. So that answer is 67.08. Now when you look at that, that's the longest one. This will be the short. That's the hypotenuse. It's going to be the longest. So right away, not, my spider senses aren't tingling that I did something backwards. So let's go to the next one. I know the board's a little crowded, but lots of practice. OAT, so TOA, 30 degrees. We don't have to change that. It's the same angle. 60. We'll get rid of that one. So what's it telling us to do? Multiply. 0.577 times 60 equals 34.6. So 34.6. Okay, I'm going through it fast, but you can always rewind. Next one, OHS. So, so. 30 degrees, we've already done, we know it's 0.5. H is 60. So we're going to, we already did the question, we're going to raise that. So that's 60. So what do you do here? You multiply. 60 times 0.5 equals 30. So this one here is 30. And again, that looks right to me. This is a long one. This is going to be a short one. So, bottom down here, ka. So, 30 degrees, ka, 0.866. 45 is h, which is down here. Let's get rid of this because it's not a this time. I flipped it. So, 45. What's it telling us to do? Multiply. So, 0.866 times 45 equals 38. I'm not even going to write it up there. 38, actually I'm going to, I'm going to round, round it off to 39 because it's 38.97, right? Next one, it's a so question. So, <laughs> H is 75. Uh, 30 degrees again, so I don't have to change that. So what's it telling you to do? Mul multiply, multiply, those are divide. So 0.5 times 75 equals 37.5. Where is that? So it's this one, 37.5. All right, almost starting to lose my voice here. So, oh, what do we got here? This is the last two trick questions. Cause they're not trick questions, but um, we're going to have to do second function. So here we go. So it's up here. So now we don't have the tan, so we're going to actually get rid of that. Because we got A is 60, O is 40, so what's it telling us to do? Divide. 40 divided by 60 equals, oh, pure evil, point, point six six six. the number of the beast again. Um, but that's the tangent, it's not the angle. So 0 0.666, second function tan. 33.69, so I'll just I'll just call it 34. So I'm going to say this is 34 degrees. Round it up, right? 33.7. Okay, now this one. Uh, ka. Here's ka. Now we are we don't have the angle, so that means we don't have the the uh, tangent of angle, or sorry, the cosine of angle, not the tangent of angle. So h is 60. Let's get rid of 45. That's 60. A is 40. Let's put that on top. And we got the same thing here, so I'm going to divide that. And this is just a fluke because I'm not trying to be a weirdo, but 0 0.666. Um, but this time, again, 0 0.666 is, what are we doing here? We're doing cosine, right? So last one we did tan. So we're going to do 0.666, second function, cosine. This is where it gets a little confusing. So 48. So basically they're saying this is 48 degrees, or 48.24. Now, there's a lot of numbers there, but if you're following along with that, again, go back, right back to the beginning, right? It's learning how to use these triangles. Right? And again, 
if you guys can't figure it out and you're still struggling, I'm not that hard to find on the internet <laughs> or through Facebook or through anything, right? I think in one of my videos I even left, left my phone number if you want to text me, right? And uh, if you need some advice because the one thing is I've helped a lot of guys with this test and giving guys advice on how to study, how to practice, how to get through this, how to think, even just thinking about certain questions. It's like I always say to guys, don't be cheap. Uh, don't be, don't think like your boss when you're answering questions. Think like the government. How to spend money, right? Because that's the people that are writing this. Because the answer is always going to be, what's the best way? Not uh, a way to do it, because on some questions, not math, but uh, um, order of operation questions, or what would you use, or how would you do it? Don't cheap out. I always say, what's the best way you can do this and make it last forever, right? And that's a way of thinking, right? Same thing with when you have four answers and you're not sure which is the answer, but if you're kinda, okay, okay, that question or that answer looks wrong, that answer looks wrong, uh, and you get rid of a couple of answers, instead of it being a 25% chance guess, it's going to be a 50-50 guess, which is a little bit better. <laughs> you might save two or three marks that way. And that's the idea, is just to keep saving marks uh, so you can <laughs> get 70%. You need to get 84 questions right. And I don't know how many guys that I've tutored in the past 10 years that, how many guys that I've seen get 68 69 percent they go right again they get 68 or 69 percent again and it's heartbreaking and when I go and ask guys it's over a simple little question a safety question an estimating question simple questions that people like they don't take the time to read read it over read it again think about it read it again look at all the answers and then read it again right just it, it there's so many ways to just try to find the right answer. And sometimes common sense isn't it. All right? So we're going to break again and uh, find some more stuff to go over. Okay, sorry guys. I had to add in one more thing here. Uh, part of the Soka Toa that uh, I didn't really review. And for some guys it will be easy. But is going through second function tan or second function cosine or second function sine. Because uh, sometimes, here's an ex or for an example here, we'll, we'll start with the first one. They're not giving you the angle. You need to find the angle. So again, we'll still go through it like we always name it. So 60 is the opposite. 80 along the bottom here is the adjacent. So if it's O and A, if we go through our triangles, Toa, or I should be going Sokotoa. So, Ka, and uh, So. <laughs> so, So, Ka, Toa. So if we've got O and A, we know it's this. So we know that's T, or Tan. And if we do this one, we've got 60, that's H, and this is O. Okay, so now we know this angle, you're going to use sine. And if we go the bottom triangle, can you see there? Yeah. So 40 is H. The bottom is A. So we got A and H cosine. So now let's go through these. So the first one's Toa. 60 is the opposite. 80 is the adjacent. Now, calculator happening here. 60 divided by 80 equals 0.75. Well, 0.75 is not an angle. So, I got 0.75 on the calculator. Second function, tan, 36.8 degrees. Whoops. So that will be 36.8 degrees. So let's keep going through them. Smash. Let's go through this one. So, uh, we know that so. So H, 60, opposite is 20. So 20 divided by 
60 equals 0.3333. Now this one is sine. So instead of just hitting the sine button again, second function sine, going backwards to it, I call it. So that's 19 degrees. So that angle is 19.47 degrees. <clears throat> and now the last one, we got A and H, so we know it's Ka. So 40 is H, the hypotenuse. 30 is A, the adjacent. 30 divided by 40, 0.75 again. I kind of use all these same numbers. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this one's cosine. So second function cosine, 41. So that's 41.4 degrees. And these are the kind of questions they do pop up. Again, you're only going to get one or two questions, but you need to know how to answer all these possible questions. All right? So and hopefully that review, it was a long review, but so could talk can be very confusing for people. So hopefully that'll uh, get you set right up. Okay, guys, now we're going to get into um, little stuff to do with furnaces. One of the main things uh, that pops up, not all the time, but it does pop up, is temperature rise calculation. So, and again, we're not, well, we are theoretically service guys, but we are not gas guys, but we still get gas questions on the CFQ, like uh, setting up a furnace, but... <laughs> Should we be doing it? Eh, not really. So, temperature rise calculation. What is the point of a temperature? What is a temperature rise calculation? So when you're setting up a furnace or a makeup air unit or any gas appliance like that for heating, you want to make sure that when the gas is burning that it's not uh, into your heat exchanger that it's not too hot. And why do we care? Because you're going to burn the thing out. If it's, at a, if it's at a good temperature, your heat exchanger should last 20 years, supposedly. Uh, and if it's not hot, hot enough, then the air coming out is not going to be very hot and it's going to run too long. So it's it basically, you're just trying to set the thing up right. So if, you, if you're set at 70 degrees, so your air temperature coming in through your return air is 70 degrees, and depending on the, uh, who's making your furnace, uh, 115 degrees is usually a half decent temperature. So if it's 70 coming in and 115 going out in the supply, that's a temperature difference of 45 degrees. Um, so, and these are like, it's just to get your brain thinking about stuff too, because a possible CFQ question that pops up is, what happens when you speed up the air across a heat exchanger? Or what happens when you slow down the air across the heat exchanger? So if you slow the air down, like lowering the CFM, it, the air is going to absorb more heat. If you speed it up, it will absorb less heat. And that's how you change the temperature for your heat exchanger. So if you, check, uh, your, if you take your thermometer and check this, and it's like, you know, 145 degrees, and you got a temperature difference of 75 degrees. It's too much, and it'll say in the uh, the uh, installation guide for your uh, furnace or makeup or whatever, right? Make a period. So the idea would be to speed up the air so it's going faster and bring down the temperature again, back down to a half decent temperature. So. Uh, where does that get us with temperature rise calculation? The mathematics behind it uh, for a possible CFQ is another one of your triangles. Remember this fun stuff? So basically when you uh, buy a uh, furnace, say we're talking about a, a one for your house, uh, you're going to ask for BTUs. And most of you guys know all 80,000 BTU furnace, right? Which is normal or used to be normal I don't know anymore because I don't install these so it's BTUs per hour the other thing is when you get asked for it they'll say well, how do you want it set up do you want us to have it set up on medium high or high or whatever usually guys go medium high 
So I'm not sure exactly how many CFM that is, but let's call it 800 CFM. Sorry, <laughs> I just made a mess of that. That should be up in here. <laughs> CFM, right? And then we'll work about calculations. And then the other part is, if you guys remember this from school, 1.08 times temperature difference. And again, these triangles, okay, if you can't memorize it, it'll be in the front of the book. And again, it'll be possibly written CFM equals BTUs over 1.08 times temperature difference. It could be written that way. It could also be written BTUs equal CFM times, you know what I'm getting at? So again, there's your triangle, right? CFM right there, there's your triangle, right? So, so you, if you have to figure that out on your own, but just try memorizing your triangles, right? Your working triangles. So, say we order an 80,000 BTU furnace. And say the temperature difference is 45. So, theoretically, <laughs> theoretically, because this is all <laughs> theoretical. It's like when you have your hands on, if you're a guy that's a gas guy, you're going to say, oh, that doesn't work. Well, sometimes it does, sometimes it does. But this is theor theory, right? So, 1.08 times... 45 equals 48.6. So now I'm going to take 80,000 divided by 48.6 equals, wow, 1,600. So they're saying <laughs> that your CFM should be 1,650. Um, and again, this is just theory, right? Uh, because and the other thing is, if you do get it, you're only going to get one question. So it's something to uh, uh, <laughs> understand how to do it, but don't, don't like, because I've left it to the end because it's one of those things that doesn't pop up that much. But uh, little questions like that do pop up into the theory of it, like the one uh, that I was just talking about before about the speed of air over a coil, right? Or service questions. If this unit's not running properly, what's most likely uh, culprit? And it's always, or the answer is going to be dirty filter. Because 75% of the time, if somebody's furnace or mega barrier unit is not running properly, it's because some idiot hasn't changed the filter for two years. Right? Uh, so, and another possible question that pops up, you're changing out a furnace and the thermostat beeps and again what is it like it's got some crazy answers and we'll go over I'm gonna go over that in the next lesson some of these crazy questions that they have which are really hard to figure out but again it's gonna be simple things uh, check the filter right it's always pretty simple you can't overthink some of this stuff so that was just the basics of that again I could I could do other things like with this I could say uh, the temperature difference is this, and also figuring out the temperature difference, but I don't think they're going to give you something like that. So let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of that and that. Let's just do another one. So say they tell you that the CFM is 1500. They're going to say, what's, what's the capacity of this unit? And they say that the temperature difference is, say, 47. So again, it's going to be 1500 times 1.08 times 47 will equal the BTUs per hour. It's all about punching the numbers into it properly, right? They could, again, they could say, uh, they could give you the BTUs. They could say the BTUs are 66,000. And they're going to say the CFM is 1250, right? So you're going to... One, and also don't forget that's still on the bottom there so you still got to get that in there 1.08 still has to be in there divide that into that and you're going to end up with a temperature difference right does it still comes up on the cfq but occasionally and it's only going to be one question
So again, don't get bent out of shape if you can't understand it. Um, oh, while I'm on it, we're going to talk about upstream and downstream because sometimes that's a word that gets in there. Or, and they use it, because again, fancy words on the CFQ just to mess you up. So you're going to see, a lot of guys don't understand what upstream and downstream is. But I always say, pretend it's like you're standing in front of a river and you flick your cigarette butt in the river. Where is it going? Downstream. It's not going to go upstream because that's the way the water's running. Same with air. So if you got air coming down like that, air coming like that, air coming like that, downstream is always the direction of the air. So if I'm at this filter rack, the return air duct here is upstream. Everything else is downstream. If I'm at uh, let's see, we're going to put the uh, evaporator there. If I say uh, you're at the evaporator, where is the, the, the blower for that? The blower is upstream. And everything else, like this, is downstream. It, it occasionally pops up with a question like that, and they're just trying to trick you because uh, people are, uh, you know, because that's what they love doing, is tricking people. All right, so... Okay, while we're while we're still on um, furnaces um, and stuff like that, there's a lot of little silly questions that you can they can try to trip you up on. So we're gonna go into the basics um, when they talk about fan speeds. So let's talk about this. We're gonna call that the motor, and we're gonna call that the fan. Hopefully, I haven't already done this, but if I have, oh, a little review. Okay, so there's your motor and the fan. So, try to always remember that it's the motor pulley that drives the fan. So, if you're gonna, if you want to speed it up, you want to make this larger. So, again, so the question could say, if you want, if what happens if you make the motor pulley larger? It increases the the, the amount of air, or incre increases the speed of fan. So watch out for this trick question, where what happens when you increase the size of the motor, uh, sorry, the fan pulley? And if you increase the fan pulley size, it actually goes slower. So that's where you gotta watch out for some of these trick questions. So and another one is, is the adjustable pulley. And me personally, I've never seen the adjustable pulley. So this, say this was the adjustable pulley, you can make it bigger and smaller. So if you turn a little screw in there and you close it, uh, which makes it go tighter. So I'm going to do a view, a view from there uh, and see if I can draw. <laughs> I'm not the best at drawing a pulley. So there's somewhat of a pulley, right, from there. So here's, here's the belt in the pulley down, down low. So it's, it, it, so it's a small diameter. So if I uh, tighten that, it pushes it up, which, which means close. So if I close, close pulley, it goes faster. And if I open the pulley, slower and so forth. Okay, and if you want to write that down, because again, I always say write stuff down, but I'm trying not to slow everything down for you guys. So there's, and then there's the math that goes with it. And again, I'm not sure if we went over that math, but that's where your cross multiplication comes in. Where um, something as simple as, uh, they say you've got 860 RPM. And, at, and you've got 4,500 CFM at that. But they need 6,000 CFM. So they call that one and two, and they call this one and two. So what's that? Well, if you cross multiply this, so basically you cr multiply those two and then divide it by this one. So basically, if you go 6,000 times 860 and divide it by 4,500, you'll get your new. Uh, 
CFM. You know what? Let's do it while we're sitting here. See if I did it right. 6,000 times 860 equals for a big number. Divide by 4,500 equals, right, 1146. So you're, to get the new speed, or sorry, to get the new speed will be 1146. That shouldn't be CFM. That should be RPM. Sorry, guys. So cross multiplication, and, and you can do that cross multiplication by adding different numbers in, or different things in it. You could even change, uh, go with, uh, instead of, let's get rid of the CFM now and move this over and use uh, pulley size. You could say that that pulley is three inch. Same thing, you would multiply this by that and divide it by that and that would give you a new pulley size. Uh, that one doesn't really come up that much so I'm not gonna, uh, get into that too much. Hopefully I'm not going through this too fast, but I don't, again, I don't want to uh, spend too much time with some of this, but the, knowing uh, whether it's the motor pulley or the fan pulley, motor pulley larger goes faster. Fan pulley larger goes slower. So I marked a bunch of things here. Um, since I'm, we're on like, uh, fans and uh, furnaces and stuff. I got a few little quick uh, questions I want to go over. Uh, a makeup air unit. So if you're commissioning, a, a, a question that's going to pop up, if you're commissioning in a makeup air unit, what do you need? And they got some silly answers like um, the list of uh, fittings you ordered and uh, the shop drawings. What you need is your startup sheet because it's going to be a sheet that you go through as you're starting up. Make sure everything is in the right position, or everything everything's been installed properly. Like again, little questions like that. Where you know, who, <laughs> unless you're a service guy. All right, sorry, I'm taking so long here. Maybe I can edit this out. Okay. So now, if you have these two pulleys and you're taking one off and one back off again, you guys need to make sure that's straight. How do you make sure that's straight? With a straight edge, sorry it's so simple. Uh, but you basically just put like a, a, a long ruler or something, that's a, a piece of dry cleat, and put it across those two uh, pulleys and make sure they're aligned or that, that uh, belt's gonna wear out real quickly. Okay, now I think we already did this, but while we're on furnaces, and stuff like this, we're gonna stick with this because a lot of people get this messed up. We're gonna just say this is a boiler, right? Another gas, another gas appliance. I know we just talked about this, but we're gonna stick with boiler breaching. So if this is the vent, you know, 3D, so there, there's the vent coming out the side, right? It could be black iron, it could be stainless, depends on. So when this is going, out and then obviously at some point it's gonna turn it's gonna turn up and go up and out of, and out of the building right <laughs> that's, that's not too fancy which way is this sloped well it has to be sloped back to the unit so it'll either burn off or be picked up by the condensate pump and a lot of people don't get it now and again Say this was a unit heater hanging up in an industrial unit and you have uh, usually that little three or four inch really uh, hard to work with uh, snap lock pipe and it's got a crimped end. So which way does the crimped end go? And everybody's like, oh, the crimped end goes that way out. It does not. The crimped end goes back to the unit so water doesn't, as, as this, the heat comes out, and the warm wet air gets turns back to condensation and it all starts dripping back. It's got to go back to the unit and burn off or go back to a condensate pump. But basically, there's, uh, there's the small end, large end. So you want it to go into the large end so that water does not fucking drip out here. Because it was back the other way around the water would just run right out of there if it was sloped the wrong way. Trick question, because again, we're not service guys and we're not, uh, 
you're definitely not gas guys. So while and of course while we're still on this, I got a couple other ones here. Oh, I think I already mentioned this one. So this is a, a question that somebody brought to me recently. After startup is has after startup, it's been noticed that there's insufficient CFM and the motor is running at the proper design RPM. So back to here. This motor is running at the right speed. Here's your four possible answers. Add a return air. <laughs> replace the... Okay. One of the answers is replace the motor. But it's running at the proper RPM. Increase duct size coming out of the unit. Or change the fan pulley. So basically, if this is running at the right speed, you could just change this fan pulley. And if you, it says insufficient CFM. So basically, you replace that fan pulley, and make it a smaller one of course, you'll get more air. And that'll still run, and that motor will still run at the same RPM. Right? And I actually, I actually checked with somebody on that one too. When I went to my air balancer and he told me the answer for that. So. Make sure I'm not sending you guys on a uh, wild goose chase on these ones. Okay, so I wish I still had that furnace up here. There's the furnace again with the return air. <laughs> Terrible drawing, sorry. So there's your furnace, return air, uh, supply. Okay, where should climate control be, be placed to ensure proper measurements? So climate control, hmm, what's climate control? Fucking fancy words for the C of Q again, so be careful. It's your thermostat, <laughs> climate control. So the answer is on the return air or before the coil or, or even coil or heat exchanger. Because like in your house, it, it's uh, in the middle of the house. It's not anywhere near uh, the supply runs or the takeoffs that are going uh, up up into the upstairs, right? Or it would lie to your furnace. It would say, oh yeah, you got lots of heat up here. Click, off it goes again. So basically, on the return air and or before coil. Uh, what is the most likely reason, I think we talked about this, most likely reason that this coil, your evaporator would uh, freeze up? Not enough air. And why is that most likely reason? Uh, clogged filter. So here's another lovely question that uh, shows up on the CQ. In a blow-through system using a direct expansion evaporation coil, where do you install the fan? Well, again, fancy words for a furnace. A blow-through system. So again, here's your uh, fan down here, right? Terrible drawing. <laughs> uh, so it takes the air and blows it, blow through system, blows through the coil, right? And it also blows it through the uh, heat exchanger. Where do you install it? In front of coil. So it, just by drawing this out, you can see that it, it's in front of the coil. But the way they word it makes it really difficult. And again, drawing stuff, giving yourself little sketches always comes in handy. Oh, here's another lovely one. If the electronic air cleaner is smaller than the return air, what do you do? <laughs> and I know what a lot of guys do. So say it's, did they say smaller? Yes, yeah, smaller. So there's your return air, right? And you're going to put an elect, say, say you're going to put it here. And this is, and, and this is smaller or bigger. Most guys will just take a piece of, piece of metal and just blank it off. Now, does it work? Yes. Is it the right thing to do? No, because again, whenever you're setting up a system, you want to try to do it the best possible. So obviously, ordering a fitting for this would be the right way to go. And okay, so say we've got a big unit here, uh, like a, a large makeup air unit, and it's got five belts in it, and one of those belts are stretched. Well, belts cost fuck all. So while you're there, you change out all five belts. Uh, oh, what, would, what happens when you increase pulley size on the fan? We just talked about that. Uh, do, do, nothing left there for fan stuff. 
Oh, okay, boilers. So we're talking about boiler breaching. And I don't know if we talked about it already, but what is the slope rating for boiler breach? Quarter inch per foot. Okay, so possible question. They're gonna say, oh, this is uh, 12 feet. What's it, how much is it dropping? So basically, you got 12 feet as a quarter inch per foot. So you can just 12 quarters or 12 times 0.25 equals, I would say, three inches. <laughs> so it's going to drop three inches. Simple question, but guys get slip, slipped up pretty easy, right? Sometimes you got to watch out because they might do that. But then sometimes they might give you, they might actually give you the drop too. They're, they also could say, oh, it's dropped six inches. How long is the run? <laughs> so same thing. Now you're going to just go backwards to that, right? You're going to take six inches and divide it by 0.25. And let, well, let's, let's test that theory. Clear, six divided by 0.25 equals 24. Yeah, so it'd be 24 feet, right? Little, little, little math things like that, you know, that you gotta watch out for, so. Okay, so that's it for, uh, I'm, I'm sure I'm probably missing some little silly question that'll pop up on the CFQ for you. Uh, again, keep writing stuff down, like, uh, and drawing stuff. When you have to figure out the measurement of something or with the layout of something uh, like here's another one I don't know if we did this earlier in a lesson but here's here's a unit they call that a they call that B now the uh, site super comes to you and says oh we want to put a housekeeping pad around this and most guys are like what's a housekeeping pad well it's <laughs> the little bit of concrete that this thing's gonna it, it sits on concrete like a concrete pad so that you can sweep around, it keeps it off, it keeps it off the ground out of, if there's ever a little bit of water on the floor. So say, and then you go look at your chart or your shop, sorry, your shop drawing for this, and A could be, you know, 20 inches this way, and this way it could be 24. So it's 20 by 24. But the the, the uh, site super wants it six inches bigger on all sides. So six inches bigger. So everybody just does this. They add six and six. So they go 26 by 30. And that's wrong. And why is it wrong? Because I'm going to show you. Because so there's there's a top view. Right? Plan view, top view of it. And we're going to go 20 by 24. Right? And they want it six inches bigger. All around. Six, six, right? So six. 30, so this is 36. 6, 6, 26, 32. So your size of that housekeeping pattern would be 32 by 36. C of Q question. Get it, get it into you. All right, so stuff like that. Um, and I, we went over a lot of tech, a lot of stuff. You know what, some guys find it easy, some guys uh, don't, but the best way to do the math that we just went through in this whole lesson, practice, practice, practice. Sorry, two more questions. Okay, so here's the, when we're talking about a heating system. Uh, you have two zones. And the question is, one zone does not get enough air. Okay, so four possible answers. Unit is not running, damper stuck, return air blocked, grill blocked. Okay, so one zone does not get enough air. And one of the answers is unit not running. The unit's running, so that one's out. Uh, damper stuck, return air blocked, grill blocked. Okay, so return air blocked, if it's blocked, then again, you're getting nothing again, right? So now a grill is blocked. Well, again, so if the grill is blocked, then is it, again, I'm gonna say it's not getting enough air at all. And then it leaves the last answer, damper stuck. So if the damper stuck, because the, the damper is what changed, like again, for you guys, See, we'll do it like this. Here's the duct. Oh, oh, sorry, guys. Uh, we're gonna do our little R branch like this, like that. Okay, so, and then you got that right there with your little 
pull arm for a damper. So this could be stuck. Even if, say if it's a mechanical or one that like it, you can do it by hand or uh, it's, it's done through a VAV box. So here, here's your unit. The unit's right there and it's running. And this zone and this zone and not enough air. This, this, this could be stuck. This could be stuck all the way in that position. Right? Meaning all the air is going to go to here and none of it to there. Uh, because again, if the, if the uh, return air, you know, because when your return air comes back to here, if it's blocked, you know, it's not going to be getting anything. Uh, is it a possibility that the grill is blocked? And No, because it says it's not getting enough air. But sometimes these questions are really vague in the way they answer it. And another possible question for units and stuff running, another possible question is, if there is a lack of airflow, what should you check? And the, for the one possible question or answers, uh, the best one that I've heard is damper, filters, and belts. So those were all in one answer. So filters, definitely. Dampers, yes, because what if it's a pull damper, any type of damper, blade damper, sometimes the screws come loose and it just and it just closes it right up. And of course the belts. The belts could be slipping. You know, so in all those three together are uh, the best uh, possible choices. Okay, so that was it for that. Just two two extra questions.